In today's True Crime and Tutorial Tuesday, I'm talking about Harold Shipman, also known as Dr. Death, whilst doing my makeup. So keep on watching to hear about his crimes and to see me create this makeup look. On January the 14th, 1946, Harold Frederick Shipman was born in Nottingham. When growing up, Harold was an accomplished rugby player in youth leagues. He excelled as a distance runner and in his final year at school he served as vice captain of the athletics team. Harold was particularly close to his mother who died of lung cancer when he was just age 17. In the later stages of her disease, she had morphine administrated at home by a doctor and Harold witnessed his mother's pain subside despite her terminal condition until her death on the 31st of June 1963. On the 5th of November 1966 he married Primrose May Oxterby and the couple had four children. In 1970, Harold graduates from Leeds University and starts working at Pontefract General Infirmary. In 1917, he begins working as a general practitioner in Todmorden, Lancashire. However, colleagues discover that he was addicted to the painkiller pethidine and was forging prescriptions of the drug. He's fined £600, fired from the practice and briefly attended a drug rehabilitation clinic in York, which is where i'm from and it's quite interesting that a lot of the cases i've covered on my channel in my true crime and tutorial tuesdays have had links and connections to york in 1977 harold starts working as a gp in hyde great manchester and in 1993 he sets up his own practice in hyde and amasses over 3,000 patients in March 1998, Harold is reported to the police after a funeral home and another GP suspected of killing his patients. However, police closed the investigation after finding insufficient evidence and the Shipman Inquiry later blamed the Greater Manchester Police for assigning inexperienced officers to the case. After the investigation was closed, Harold killed three more people and in August, the taxi driver John Shaw told the police that he suspected Harold of murdering 21 patients. John became suspicious as many of the elderly customers that he took to the hospital, who seemed to be in good health, died in Harold's care. In June, Kathleen Grundy is found dead and her daughter, Angela Rudruff, reports Harold to the police after suspecting him of forging her mother's will to cut off her family and instead gave £386,000 to Harold. Kathleen's body was exhumed and found to contain traces of diamorphine, which is heroin, Often used for pain control in terminal cancer patients, Harold claimed that Kathleen had been an addict and showed them the comments he had written to that effect in his computerised medical journal. However, examination of his computer showed that they were written after her death. On the 7th of September, Harold is arrested for the murder of Kathleen Grundy. On the 5th of October 1999, Harold's murder trial begins in Preston Crown Court, where he's on trial for killing 15 elderly patients. The police investigations into the deaths discovered a pattern of administering lethal doses of diamorphine, signing patients' death certificates, and then falsifying medical records to indicate that they had been in poor health. On the 31st of January 2000, a jury convicts Harold on all 15 counts of murder and he's sentenced to life in prison. He was charged with the murders of 15 women by lethal injections of diamorphine, or between 1995 and 1998. The names of these 15 victims are Marie West, Irene Turner, Lizzie Adams, Jean Lilly, Ivy Lomas, Maria Grimshaw, Marie Quinn, Kathleen Wagstaff, Bianca Pomfret, Nora Nuttall, Pamela Hiller, Maureen Ward, Winifred Meller, Joan Melia, and Kathleen Grundy. Howard constantly denied his guilt, disputing the scientific evidence against him. He never made any public statements about his actions. Howard's wife, Primrose, had vastly maintained her husband's innocence, even after his conviction. Howard is the only doctor in the history of British medicine to be found guilty of murdering his patients. On the 1st of February, Health Secretary Alan Milburn opens an inquiry into Harold's murders and how they happened. 
relative to the victim's campaign for the private inquiry to be held in public. Police announced that they are investigating Harold's role in 175 deaths, but revealed that there will be no more murder charges. In April, South Manchester coroner John Pollard says he will hold inquests into 23 deaths not covered by the original police investigation. In July, a judge rules that the inquiry must be held in public after the relatives of Harold's suspected victims take the government to court. In January 2001, government reports suggest approximately 236 of Harold's former patients may have been killed. The Shipman Inquiry begins in Manchester, with the first phase dedicated to examining over the 466 cases where Harold's foul play is suspected. In July 2002, first phase of the inquiry report is published, concluding that he killed at least 215 of his patients and possibly more. 171 were women, 44 were men, the oldest was a 93-year-old woman and the youngest was a 47-year-old man. In total, 459 people died while under his care between 1971 and 1998, but it's uncertain how many of these were murder victims, as he was often the only doctor to certify a death. It is estimated of Harold's total victim count over that 27-year period was 250. In July 2003, the second and third shipment inquiry reports are published, where Dame Janet Smith criticises the police's investigation. She calls for radical reform of the way coroners work in England and Wales. Harold hanged himself in his cell at HM Prison Wakefield at 6.20am on the 13th of January 2004 on the eve of his 58th birthday and was pronounced dead at 8.10am. A statement from Her Majesty's Prison Service indicated that he had hanged himself from the window bars of his cell using bedsheets. After Harold's death, his body was taken to the mortuary at the Medico Legal Centre for a post-mortem examination. West Yorkshire coroner David Hinchcliffe eventually released the body to the family after a inquest was opened and adjourned shortly after. Some of the victim's family said they felt cheated as Harold's suicide meant they would never have the satisfaction of his confession nor answers as to why he committed his crimes. Harold's death divided national newspapers, with the Daily Mail branding him as a cold coward and condemning the prison service for allowing his suicide to happen. However, The Sun ran a celebratory front page headline, Ship Ship Hooray. Harold's motive for suicide was never established, though he reportedly told his probation officer that he was considering suicide to assure his wife's financial security after he was stripped of his NHS pension. Primrose Shipman received a full NHS pension. She would not have been entitled to it if Harold had lived past 60. A 2005 inquiry found that Harold's suicide could not have been predicted or prevented, but that procedures should be nonetheless re-examined. After Harold's body was released to the family, it remained in Sheffield for more than a year, despite multiple false reports about his funeral. His widow was advised by police against burying her husband in case the grave was attacked. Harold was eventually cremated on the 19th of March 2005 at Hutcliffe Wood Crematorium. The cremation took place outside normal hours to maintain secrecy and was attended only by Primrose and her four children. A memorial garden to Harold's victims called the Garden of Tranquility opened in Hyde Park on the 30th of July 2005. As of early 2019, families of over 200 of the victims of Harold were still seeking compensation for the loss of their relatives. In September 2009, authorities announced that letters that Harold wrote in prison would be sold at auction, but following complaints from the victims' relatives and the media, they withdrew the letters from the sale. The Shipman case and a series of recommendations in the Shipman Inquiry report led to changes to standard medical procedures in the UK, now referred to as the Shipman Effect. Many doctors reported changes in their dispensing practices and a reluctance to risk over-prescribing pain medication, 
may have led to under-prescribing medication. Death certification processes were altered as well. Perhaps the largest change was the movement from single doctor general practices to multiple doctor general practices. This was not a direct recommendation but rather because the report stated that there was not enough safeguarding and monitoring of doctors' decisions. The forms needed for accommodation in England and Wales have had their questions altered as a direct result of the Shipman case. So this is everything I've been able to find on this case. I hope you guys have all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.